Hello everyone, my name is Dina Plays and this is the Nerds Templar. Hey Templar, Zach here, interviewing the one, the only, the Dina Plays, or Dina from Dina Plays rather. How are you today, Dina? I'm doing good, thank you. That's what what about yourself? I'm, I'm doing very well, been playing a lot of Sea of Thieves. Oh, I'm excited for that, I'm gonna go and play it after this interview. <laughs> So, fun fact, we should play it together sometime. I'll yeah, sure. My gamer tag. Cause, uh, yeah. In my, I just did a review and the biggest thing is, it's fun to play with people. I'm not sure if I like it solo yet. I need to get some more experience on it. No, I haven't actually played anything on the beta. Um, I've just been staying spoiler free. Um, I am actually, just throwing out a fun fact, I am shit scared of water in games. So it's not really the optimal game for me. I'm probably gonna alt F for the moment I get thrown off the ship, but we'll see how far I can I can go. <laughs> so you and me have that in common. Um, even oh, that's if, great. Even in World of Warcraft, um, Vashir. <laughs> Vashir was a nightmare. Um, <laughs> yeah. Anytime I would have to swim or anything, those underwater world quests, I get that anxiety. Um, yes, exactly. And it's just weird. Because you know it's just a game. and Exactly. What's worse <laughs> is when underwater isn't textured, so you can't see anything. Yeah, and then they implemented the Kraken as well, and uh, <laughs> I'm just noping straight out of that. <laughs> nope. No, I'm, I'm gonna I'm be nice that one who's just swimming away. <laughs> oh man, no, I'm... I will say Sea of Thieves, I don't feel as anxious, because half the point is the you know, be in the ocean, but yeah, uh, it, it's it's so breathtakingly beautiful that I think oh, yeah, the anxiety sure. will kind of fall to the wayside of the majesty of the ocean. But uh, I hope, I hope that will be the same situation for me. To be honest, <laughs> if <laughs> because not, it's really scary. <laughs> if not, there's plenty of islands. Um, from yeah, what I've seen. Yeah. So before. This becomes a Sea of Thieves uh, hype <laughs> yeah. interview. Um, why don't you tell us a little bit about you, your channel, what you do, what sets you apart from the rest of the World of Warcraft YouTubers out there? Oh, wow. Okay. Um, that's quite interesting. So I'm 24 years old and I've been doing... Uh, I've been doing this for a couple of years now. I think I started Twitch streaming on... Um, like ages ago i think i was 20 21 it was pretty new back then to be like all the workout streamer um and then uh, i figured out that i didn't really have the time that i wanted to uh to be full-time streaming uh so i figured i could start doing youtube videos uh, as like a way of giving my viewers offline content and then it went really well actually to start off with um i i got like to three thousand subscribers really really fast i never i never believed in a million years um it would grow that fast and then um i just continued doing it doing twitch on the side and youtube and trying to balance it out um and the main things that I try and do with uh, with my YouTube channel is that I try and help people as much as possible. So my YouTube and Twitch channel used to mostly be about uh, gold making and gold farming and general guides. So like a little bit like tips and tricks about how to get around in the world. For example, um, how to get to your garrison in Warlords without having to do the prequest. Stuff like that. Easy PC guides everyone could understand didn't really require much from you um and then it just escalated really into uh the generic <laughs> videos that everyone does <laughs> because to be honest uh world of warcraft doesn't have that much content like other games like you can't do um like um a gaming compilation video or anything like that. maybe if you do pvp but i'm not big on pvp these days so my channel is pretty much just a mix of everything right now i just do what i want to do if i figure out if i come up with an idea i will do it so it's a little bit about me a little bit about world of warcraft and everything in between there <laughs> no that's fair um 
I think that's 100% spot on. Even though World of Warcraft is this massive game, everyone seems to make videos about the same thing. Exactly. So if I see one more Zandalari Druid overview video, I'm, I'm gonna go nuts. Oh yeah, I did one. <laughs> but mine was sort of in a response because I'm a really big fan of lore. Uh, so I got a little bit triggered by another YouTuber who uh, doesn't seem to know that much about lore and uh, made a made a really angry rant about how Sandalaria Druids shouldn't have that form and I was just like, no, no, no. <laughs> that was literally my take on the Sandalaria Druids. <laughs> so how do you feel about Kul'Tiran Druids since that's the hot topic right now? Oh, I think they look absolutely smashing, to be honest. Uh, I like the wicker look. I really think it's cool. You can easily see that they've used the same skeleton like they did with the Sandalari uh, druid form. Um, and obviously it is lore um, accurate because of the cool tyrants using like dusk magic and and things like that. So I think it's it's really cool. I like... I like that Blizzard is doing these things because it just shows that they could at one point improve all the other druid races, for example. I am looking forward to being able to play a human type druid without every time I go into combat having to become a worgen. Yeah, um, I agree. Because for some reason it just kills me every time I cast like a starfire and it's like, oh, now I'm a wolf. Yeah, no, I don't like wargans just purely because of their models and, and like helmets look weird on them and stuff like that. It's just, I've always found it, find it tricky to play a wargan because I like the aesthetical part of, of World of Warcraft. I like my characters to look nice. <laughs> and then all of a sudden you're a wargan and everything just looks super goofy. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, since we're already kind of on the topic... Um, what are your thoughts of World of Warcraft in its current state and where it's headed with Battle for Azeroth? Okay, um, that's interesting because I am a mythic raider. <laughs> so we actually just killed Argus Mythic yesterday. No, Sunday. So two days ago. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. I wasn't even in. <laughs> I wasn't even home. and <laughs> Those bastards killed it without me. It's okay, um, I'll still give you the credit. Yeah, thank you. I was in there for all the progress, though, at least. So I just missed out on four hours, which happened to be the kill. Uh, but anyways, um, the current state, I am at this, like, crossroads now because I have absolutely no idea what to do right now. Because as a raider, as a mythic raider, there's been non-stop progress when it comes to, like tiers and raids like you you started off with the uh, emerald nightmare and then straight to um um trial of valor and then straight from helia to uh the nighthold and then nighthold is done and then you have like one week and you're straight to to tomb of sargeras and then straight to antares there's been literally no breaks <laughs> so i'm absolutely exhausted and now i'm just like it's been good but like, they obviously listened to us saying that we didn't get enough content in, for example, Warlords, because Warlords was a disaster. But at the moment, we just have, as a Mythic Raider at least, we just have too much content. <laughs> Does that make sense? I mean, that's that's a good complaint to have, though. Um, I you think from a developer's it, standpoint. It's not really a complaint, and a lot of people have been saying the same. Um, like, it's been keeping us busy but now we're at this point where okay we have what seven months left until bfa and uh now is actually the time i get to play because <laughs> i've been working doing youtube and then i've been raiding i have never really had any time to just play i i did have time recently to level up a void elf from 20 to 110 so i did that and that was really good. I really, really enjoyed the level scaling, um, except from 60 to 80. <laughs> Other than that, it was great. <laughs> would you say you like the new way better than the old way? Yes, I would. 
I would say um, there are some tweakings, tweaks that they could do, but uh, nothing is ever going to be perfect the first time they try it, obviously. Um, I really enjoyed being able to stay in zones and, and finish them. Uh, working on the lore master achievement. Um, what I didn't like was that 60 to 80 went really slow versus 20 to 40 and 80 to 110. Like even doing Legion is quicker than doing 70 to 80, for example, at least in my experience. And then everything is overtuned as well. <laughs> so all of the like uh, boss not bosses, but the um, elite NPC quests, they are extremely overtuned, so it's really hard to kill them. <laughs> I've had pe I've had these NPCs just one-shotting me, and I was like, I need people to come and actually help me, and I've never had that issue before. Even when I started playing World of Warcraft, I've never had that issue. So do you think that might be like an intentional design feature to get people back into the more group-based MMO content as opposed to just the solo experience? Uh, no, I don't think it's intentional. I, I don't think having a certain aspect of the questline being overtuned is intentional because nothing should say that being one-shotted by a mob when you are in full heirlooms is intentional. That's fair. That's fair. Mm -hmm. I, I forgot about heirlooms. Mm -hmm. <laughs> God bless them. Yeah. Um, so, when Battle for Azeroth was announced, obviously we had WoW Classic announced right before it. Um, which would you say you're more excited by? Uh, personally, it would be Battle for Azeroth because I, I like games that progress. I would never just stick to to one game. Um, it's like a, it's like an RPG. You would never just you would maybe pl replay it a few times, like if it's your favorite game, but you would like it to progress at one point, and um, you would like to give feedback and see that feedback happen. And especially when in terms of World of Warcraft, you just want to know what's going to happen next. But that doesn't mean that I'm not excited for Classic because I started playing World of Warcraft in Wrath of the Lich King, so I never had that vanilla Classic experience. So I don't have an opinion about vanilla. Everyone's trying to get me to t uh, like talk about my my opinion about vanilla, but I have absolutely no opinion about it. <laughs> so it's going to be a really good breath of fresh air to try it out, and uh, it's obviously not going to be like the a genuine experience like like the the people that played vanilla had but it's going to be as close as they can get with me never playing vanilla i i hear you there because nothing's ever like the first time you experienced it um all that wonder all that stuff that's gone um yeah and it's funny you said you started playing in wrath because i'm a wrath baby too yeah um, <laughs> my friends finally pushed me into uh playing the game like two months after Wrath came out. Yeah, so it was sort of the same with me. I My father used to play Warcraft 3, and uh, so I knew about Warcraft, and my godfather used to play World of Warcraft. He introduced me to World of Warcraft when, I, when uh, during Vanilla. I think I was around 12 years old, and I wasn't really interested in it. I, I really enjoyed video games. I've always, I, I was brought up with video games and stuff like that. But World of Warcraft didn't really interest me uh, until, I, I've, I've talked about this in a video where I talked about like my World of Warcraft story. But it's actually funny how I got into World of Warcraft. Um, I had the biggest crush on a guy in high school. <laughs> And he used to play WoW. <laughs> so I started playing WoW to get close to this guy. <laughs> we were still mates. Nothing happened though. Like it was just a stupid crush. We we're still mates. And he takes some of the credit whenever I reach like a milestone or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, everyone's done something like that in school. Yeah. Um, it's like I wanted to be cool, you know, in his eyes. 
No, I hear it. That's why I ended up reading mm. the Twilight novels. And, oh, uh, no. <laughs> oh, yeah. That didn't work out in my favor either. Um, oh. But let me tell you, those books, terrible. Garbage. They're terrible, Trash. yeah. Um, no, I'm kind of in the same boat with WoW Classic. I don't really have that opinion. I, I do want to see what 40-man raids are right. Are, oh, if yeah. If I could talk, that'd be great. <laughs> like, Should I would... I would love that experience of not being able to fly and, like, just explore. But for me, Azeroth is already explored, so it's obviously not going to be the same type of experience or feeling. I just miss old world sometimes. I want to see old yeah. school thousand needles without all the, yeah. all the water. I do not remember how World of Warcraft, how Azeroth looked before cataclysm so that's gonna be great <laughs> even even the cities just look remarkably different yeah. yeah um definitely probably what i'm most excited for is the old school way that things used to look for sure for sure um so why don't you tell us some fun facts about yourself oh fun facts i don't know i already told you one or two uh, that I got I... into World of Warcraft because of a guy I had a crush on. <laughs> but uh, there is another thing that not a lot of people know. Um, it's it's more like a sad fact more than a fun fact, but it's sort of a fun fact as well. Um, Twitch and YouTube actually helped me get over the worst of my social anxiety. Which is uh, amazing. <laughs> I used to be so, I, like, I used to be really bad. Um, it's even like, you could even, if I still had some of my, like, old VODs from Twitch, you could see how much I have changed in the last three or four years. It's absolutely amazing to look, and it just shows that if people just dare to do something, and especially for me, I tried so hard for so long to like get over that social anxiety. And then three years later, I was sitting at a convention being interviewed in front of 4,000 people um, while it was live streamed on Twitch for I don't know how many more people were watching. And it just shows that if you just try, you can succeed. No, definitely. Um, what convention was that? It was a convention in Norway, so uh, it was called The Gathering, but the interview was in English, so pretty fun. That does sound fun. Um, yeah. Um, other fun facts, I'm not so sure. Uh, oh, okay, this one is a little bit naughty. And uh, not a lot of people know this, but I usually always record my videos without trousers, without pants on. <laughs> well, I mean, you gotta be comfortable while you record. Yeah, I know exactly. So I'm like, I'm like, like most of the time when I don't have like a webcam, it's just because I can't be arse getting dressed. <laughs> I know it's like that story of my life. Well. <laughs> yeah. Um, other than that, I, I'm not that interesting, really. Like, I just do what I like to do, and I've I've managed to get to a point where I never ma I thought I would be. Like, I just got thirty thousand subscribers a couple of days ago, and uh, I feel like I've never like it's never been a full time thing for me. I've never focused solely on YouTube or Twitch. It's always been like a side, a hobby thing. So I never thought I would get here. Because to be honest, I'm really shit at, <laughs> at doing this. I can't keep up a schedule. I keep saying I'm going to do something and then I don't have time. And then I feel really bad. But at the end of the day, it's not a full-time job. And, and I've always said that, that this is just something I do on the side. And at least people seem to understand that. That it's not, like, I'm not doing it on purpose. I just don't have time. <laughs> So if the opportunity arose to where it could be a full-time thing, would you do that or would you just remain keeping it as a hobby? I would probably, but I'm planning on going back to uni. So uh, so it depends a little bit 
if I if I would manage to sort of juggle uni and this. But yeah, if it happened now, I would go full time. Yeah, right now, then yes. No, that's fair. And I'm starting to see that more and more. It looks like more and more WoW YouTubers are finally starting to be able to do this full time. Um, yeah. Especially this year, I've talked to a few that were like, yeah, I've been doing this for four years, but now I can finally, you know, do it full time. Um, oh, yeah, for sure. Like, I still earn more from my YouTube, Patreon, Twitch, whatever, than I earn from my job. <laughs> so it's like a nice little side income. Um, and it's like my my parents, for example, have finally understood that there's actually, actually, a, you can actually make a living doing this. And that's always important when people realize you're not just kind of recording videos, you're, it, it starts to become part of your livelihood. Yeah, exactly. But it's, it's never, it was never a part of the money. What? It was never about the money. It was more like, cool. I do something and then I get paid for it. Like, to be honest, like the hourly rate is quite shit. You sit there working for 12, 24 hours for a video that earns maybe $10. But it's never really about that. It's more about the being able to help others and maybe give others the courage of doing the same thing. Like I've seen people, um, when I started on Twitch, I know that if I did it full time, I could be somewhere completely different, but it all happens for a reason, or at least that's what I believe. Like I've seen people follow me on Twitch five years ago who never streamed a day in their life. And I, now they're like, they get like 200,000 viewers on, on Twitch. And I think it's amazing. It is definitely amazing that now the internet's kind of allowing for that. Um, oh yeah, where for sure. Where communities are starting to form. Um, yeah, for sure. If you go back even 10 years ago, I don't think anyone would have thought, yeah, man, YouTube, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make videos. It's gonna be awesome. I'm gonna get paid. Um, <laughs> yeah. Everyone was just posting videos of cats. Of cats, yeah, but who doesn't love cats, though? Or at least videos of them. <laughs> no, it's... I don't, I don't really know, because I've never actually really thought about it. Every time people ask me the same question, like, would you do this full-time? Is, like, do you earn a lot and whatever? It's like, I don't really pay that much attention. <laughs> I never pay attention to my own numbers. Um, sure, if a video does really well, then it's exciting because you know that that gives obviously more exposure and people enjoy what you make. But like on a day to day basis, I don't really care. I just post it and then I see where it goes. I read my comments. I read every comment, even though it's a ton of them. <laughs> and uh, and I'm really enjoying it. It makes me really happy that people appreciate what I do. And at the end of the day, that is what matters the most to me. No, definitely. It's all about making sure that your goals that you set out and what you want are being met. Um, yes. Which is always a plus and kind of keeps it from becoming a chore. Um, which I see with too many people who do World of Warcraft content. Is, um, oh, yeah. All of a sudden, they're not playing the game. They're just creating videos about the game yeah i see that happen a lot as well and i i never want that to happen to me so that's why i've prioritized actually if i have time to play the game i would rather play the game instead of streaming it or filming it because the sad thing is that when i'm home and i'm playing the game i always feel like i'm working like i never have that feeling that i can just wind down and play World of Warcraft like I wanted to. I always have at the back of my head that I need to get something out. I need to do something. Oh, I could film this. Oh, that's a good idea. And it's very stressful. No, definitely. Even I'm starting to see that when I play games um, is, all right, do I record this or do I not? And is it wasted time if I don't record this? Yeah, exactly. Um, so you just hit 30,000 fans. Congratulations, or subscribers. Thank you. It, Thank you. It's different words for the same thing. 
Um, <laughs> yeah. Well, overall, across all my my uh, platforms, it's closing up to like I think it's fifty or sixty thousand. So it's pretty cool. Um, last time I checked, it was around that number. So I've come a long way. I was gonna say, and I think you still have a long way to go too. I think your journey oh, yeah. is not quite done yet. No, I don't think so either. I think I can. I if I just work hard, <laughs> then I can get there. That's all it is. It's uh, in the words of Shadow LaBeouf, it's you just gotta do it. Just gotta do it. Yeah. Do it. Um, <laughs> so, do you have any words you want to say to those fifty thousand people who follow you across all your social media? Oh well. Um, just that I love every single one of them, except those weirdos that like send dick pics or uh, ask me to sit on their face on a daily basis. <laughs> like you guys can go <laughs> somewhere else. Um, other than that, I just appreciate every single one that has shown um, so much support and love in the past few years. And even I just moved abroad like a year ago and I went through a really rough time without my computer and people were so understanding and it's absolutely amazing what a community I've built and um, I'm looking forward to meeting a lot more people and uh, and caring about so many people is always <laughs> too much <laughs> like my heart can't fit more people in it but I'll try <laughs> that's so cheesy <laughs> I mean, just because it's cheesy doesn't mean it's not true. Um, exactly. It's like, I see it as a family and not just like as fans. I would never call them fans. <laughs> it's more like a community and people, people that I, that I have things in common with. Like, even though I'm not working or when I'm not doing videos and, and stuff like that, I'm always 24-7 available on Discord. I talk so much on Discord with my, my community and uh, people think that's quite a unique thing because you don't find a lot of content creators, apparently, I don't know, that do the same thing. So I, gonna... I just try and be a part of the community. I don't want to be the head of the community. I want to be a part of it. No, and th that's awesome, because it is rare. I'm in a few of those community-style discords. I'll have to grab an invite to yours, by the way. Um, yeah, where sure. Where you have... It's, oh, go ahead. It's just discord.gg slash dinaplays, because I'm partnered, bitches. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. I still have to figure out how to get partnered. I think you need, like, a thousand people in your Discord or something. Something. Like uh, when I got it, it was 300, but they've upped the requirements. So, yeah. No, it seems easy to get 300 people in the Discord these days, especially with how yeah. big it is. But, um, no, it's awesome that you do interact, because I'm in a few where you have the person up top, like the content creator. And oh, I am never, on top because I'm the boss bitch. Talk, <laughs> well, no, you should be, but like you never see them post or talk. Oh yeah. And then you go to like DM them to ask them a question, and they have DMs blocked, which is fine. That I understand. Because depends on get, the person, but you would get yeah. barraged by messages twenty four seven. I think I know who you're talking about, but yeah. <laughs> but um. Yeah, that's really it for today, unless you have any other random words of wisdom you'd like to give. Just uh, never give up. <laughs> Do a cheesy one. And uh, playing video games is never lame. So just continue doing what you'd love and uh, stay awesome, everyone. Wise words from Dina from Dina Plays. Um, this has been an interview with Dina. If you liked it, please do comment, like, and subscribe, and make sure to follow her channel. I will put the info in the description down below.